Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channels Television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Court orders Department of State Services to produce former National Security Advisor, retired Colonel Sambo Dasuki, in court. Suspended Director General of Securities and Exchange Commission, Munir Gwarzo, is cleared of corruption charges leveled by ICPC at Abuja High Court. Taraba and Benue state governments reach agreement to end incessant clashes between Tiv and Jukun ethnic groups. And protests continue in Sudan, leading to the sack of public prosecutor and state TV boss. AU threatens country's military leaders with suspension. ChannelCV.com has more information for you. And on youtube.com forward slash channels web, you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news and updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature that can use to share pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, tap and swipe to reveal the menu, and please follow the instructions. Governor Tanko Almakura of Nasarawa State has given the security personnel a seven-day ultimatum to fish out perpetrators of the recent attack settlement of Akwanga local government area of the state. He gave the order today at the General Hospital in Akwanga when he visited the injured victims of the attack that left 17 people dead. The governor promised that the incident would be treated with all the seriousness it deserves, describing it as unwarranted and worrisome. And to avert further occurrences, the governor also directed that a security base be stationed in the troubled area to give residents a sense of security. To know who are the perpetrators of this act, and I've given about seven days maximum because we want to use that as a deterrent against any group of people who have this propensity for killing people unnecessarily. This is very worrying for us in Nassau State because we have enjoyed tremendous amount of peace. The herders, the farmers, even with the attrition, have not had any serious uh, situation that has resulted into killings. Have also directed for uh, a security base, a permanent security outfit that will stay within the vicinity of these villages to ensure that such thing uh, does not repeat itself so that we can give the people some rest of mind and confidence about peace and security. It's such a large pity that this has happened, but I can assure you we will not leave anything unturned in ensuring that this does not happen again. Away from security now, the Independent National Electoral Commission has presented certificates of return to the River State Governor elect Nyesom Wike, his deputy, the Pablo Bango and 32 newly elected members of the House of Assembly. The INEC Electoral Commissioners at the event congratulated the recipients, but also condemned the level of violence during the just-concluded elections in the state. In his acceptance speech, Governor Wike says institutions of government must stick to their constitutionally assigned roles to avert violence and avoidable deaths during elections. Our correspondent Emmanuel Ere reports. All seems set as the governor-elect, who is also the sitting governor of River State, in company of his deputy governor-elect, the national chairman of the PDP, some members of the Senate, arrive for what is the climax of the 2019 elections in the state. The presentation of the certificate of return to all elected persons at the state headquarters of the Independent National Electoral Commission in Port Harcourt, the state capital. The National Commissioner of the Commission in charge of Rivers, Bielsa and Edo states and the state resident electoral commissioner both take turns to give an overview of the polls. We thank you all for your contributions, fortitude, resilience and commitment towards the peaceful conclusion of the election process in Rivers State. So we know that not everyone was happy with our commitment to maintaining the rules, but we were undaunted and we showed true valor in upholding the standards of equity. 
Oprum Iroya N. Then, the presentation of certificates of return to state assembly members elect. <laughs> and to the deputy governor elect. His Excellency, Ezenwo Yesom Wike. And now time for perhaps the big moment as the governor receives his certificate of return. Stand up for the champions, for the champions. We dedicate this victory to God Almighty. We dedicate this victory to the people of River State. We dedicate this victory to those whom the army killed in defense of their votes. Well, let me say for the first time, commend INEC for standing firm to see the truth. As the event winds down, groups and persons take to the streets outside, dancing and singing solidarity songs as the people look forward to more development in another four years. Emmanuel Iri, Channels Television News. And from Rivers, we cross over to Abuja. Here's Ibrahim Adra. Hey, Brian. Hello, Ijeoma, and good evening, everyone. In a bid to effectively combat national and regional crimes, the federal government has signed a memorandum of understanding with the International Criminal Police Organization Interpol for intelligence sharing. It is the first step towards the implementation of the West African Police Information System, WAPIS, an Interpol initiative targeted at sharing critical criminal data among member states. The Secretary General of the International Police Network, Mr. Jürgen Stock, maintains that the pact is key to curbing crimes such as terrorism, kidnapping and piracy along the Gulf of Guinea. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, the Secretary General of the International Criminal Police Organization, Interpol, the European Union Ambassador to Nigeria, and the Nigerian Inspector General of Police are among the dignitaries hosted by the Minister of Interior as the federal government signs the agreement for the production of a West African biometrics identity card for citizens. The agreement, when fully implemented, will encourage intelligence sharing among West African countries in order to help effectively combat crime in the region. The implementation of WAPIS is an important step in enhancing the security of Nigeria, West Africa, and ultimately each of Interpol's 194 member countries. The WAPIS brings all the West African countries together so as to collect data on crime and criminalities. When that data is collected, it is made accessible to all law enforcement agencies within the subregion. So it is a tool that is needed for every country within this subregion for us to be able to fight crime. However, signing such an agreement is one thing. It is quite another for parties to the agreement to ensure that its objectives are fully realized. We are looking forward to seeing the full implementation of the WAPIS platform in Nigeria to see that rolling out of the staff being identified and of course by the end of the day to see this converted into real action on the ground, providing those fundamental services to the citizens of the ECOWAS region because that is what it is about by when push comes to show, making sure that security is the point of departure for development and opportunities for all. I'm confident that the establishment of National Electronic Police information system shared by the law enforcement agencies in Nigeria through the WAPIS program will ensure seamless regional information sharing as well as access to Interpol's secure global communication system, the I-247. Interpol has over 194 member countries around the world sharing security intelligence in order to help combat criminality. Apart from promoting this global intelligence sharing, the European Union, which is one major sponsor of the Interpol, is also encouraging regional data sharing mechanism 
like the West African Police Information System, WAPIS, which the Nigerian government just appended its signature to. This, they hope, will help to curb national and regional crimes like terrorism, kidnapping, and sea piracy. Meanwhile, the Senate has resolved to quicken the passage of the police reform bill after a federal lawmaker expressed concern over what he describes as incessant killings of Nigerians by policemen. Senator Dino Melae called the attention of his colleagues to the incident of Saturday, April the 13th, when policemen allegedly shot to death a 20-year-old lady identified as Adai Fai and wounded a young man, Emmanuel Okumafua, in Lagos. The latest killing comes barely two weeks after a young man, Kolade Johnson, was shot and killed by policemen, also in Lagos. I rise this morning to draw the attention of the Nigerian Senate to the incessant killings by the Nigerian police on some innocent Nigerians. Last week alone, Mr. President, men of SARS on three different occasions, three different places, killed innocent Nigerians. Mr. President, I'm bringing this before the Senate because we are not in a war in Nigeria and we are in a democracy and this type of killings cannot continue so I'm demanding that the police reform is now more urgent than ever. Happily enough, Mr. President, tomorrow we will be looking and deliberating on the police reform bill. So I'm using this to call the attention of the Senate that we look at this expeditiously and, if possible, pass this on time so that the killings, indiscriminate killings of Nigerians by these overzealous, happy trigger policemen can stop. The life of every Nigerian is valuable, is important, and should not be taken unceremoniously. Coming up in our new segment, Nigeria's inflation rate falls for the third consecutive month to 11.25% in March. News at 10 returns in just a moment. Join us again.